Today, my friends, we need this gaze more than ever. There's been a lot of static lately. My life, YouTube in general, and hey, in some of your lives out there too. You know what? Look at this man's gaze. Let it consume you. Let all the issues that we're having here just evaporate from your body. Do you feel, you're apparently supposed to feel a tingling in your tip of your penis or your fingertips. Look at his lip, it's like quivering. You see his lip quivering? Is that part of the gaze or he looks like he's about to giggle because he knows he's fleecing everyone in the crowd. What's with his lip quivering? Never noticed that. <laughs> but don't, uh, the focal point is that, is the gaze. Now listen. Everyone, just take a deep breath before we address the issues of today, which is at the top. We're going to be talking about the backlash that I got for my PewDiePie episode. Okay. I wonder how long <laughs> before Brazzo's people get in touch with it. What is with his lip? Like, it's really got a quiver. And... And his left eye, or right, if you're staring at it, is moving independent of the other one. This is kind of tripping me out now. His, well, this gaze is not, I'm losing the, I'm losing the tingle, I'm, I'm just confused. His right eye moves independently of his left one, Bratzo. What a, what a gaze it is. You could gaze. Anyway, I wonder how long before Bratzo's people are like, gonna send us a notice for pirating this this unlicensed gaze that eye is free anyway listen feel the gaze feel the warmth from the tingle today we are talking about the backlash we are talking about logan paul who posted on our roast me on reddit and the results is something i never seen before just look at the gaze focus on the gaze so lots of boofs and goofs up ahead. We're going to announce the winners from the charity. This video is sponsored by Video Blocks, Audible, Nature Box, H3H3Shop.com, and Pull Off Brazzo. Viewers like you who subscribe to us on Twitch, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Now, um, let's get, let's get, by the way, this is just me, by the way, let me change this. It's just me. I've never done this before. Thank you for that overlay. In case anybody doesn't know, watching this, who doesn't know who I am. I'm Ethan from H3H3 Productions. <laughs> I always like to thank y'all for coming out here and spending your Friday with us. I think that's a special congratulations on making it through Friday. It's the weekend, you know. God gave us the weekend so that we can watch, catch up on Netflix and masturbate. That's what the weekend's for. But before that, we have this podcast that we share together. All right, so let's get into this. <coughs> A lot of people were upset for an episode we had where we uh, criticized... PewDiePie for his usage of the n-word. There was a lot of people upset about that. And I had ad I have addressed it once before. I was drunk. I was I, I was 4 hours into a stream. I was all, nearing blackout drunk. Not probably the best state of mind to address something like that in. Fully acknowledge that. So I definitely tip my beanie in shame for that. <laughs> and so let me just talk about it sober. And after having reflected on it for a couple of days here too. So listen, <clears throat> what I really think about it is that most of the people who were upset about it probably didn't watch the whole episode. <clears throat> because the, the harshest criticism I landed against PewDiePie was that I was disappointed. You know, spent like 
10 minutes talking about that I was disappointed. It's been 10 or more minutes of equal time or probably more defending the guy against these, these, uh, the, uh, programmers, you know, who are like, I'm going to DMC his whole fucking catalog and talk to every programmer I know and try to ruin his life. You know, I mean, my argument was, was simply that as the biggest YouTuber and someone we've all defended in the past, I was disappointed to see him dropping the end bomb. You know, we're, we're, we're already vilified in the eyes of the media and it doesn't, and it doesn't help. And I, and you want to know, you know why? I mean, like if, if anything, it would have been hypocritical. I felt to not talk about it after having already defended him. I mean, people say, well, you didn't talk about John Tron when his whole racist fiasco went down. Well, I never publicly defended John Tron. I did for Felix. And so, you know, <coughs> I got to I got to acknowledge both. I got to acknowledge both sides. If I'm going to come out hard defending this guy, I feel like it would be hypocritical for me not to be like, you know what? He, he kind of fucked up this time. And that's kind of the extent. That's as far as I took it. I thought it was an interesting conversation, you know? I, clearly it was. There's been a lot, a lively debate about it. I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, PewDiePie did nothing wrong. I disagree. But here's the, here's the crutch. It's okay, guys, to disagree with me. It's okay to disagree with people. This country is in a fucking divide like I've never seen before. You can disagree you don't have to get outraged, you know. And we talk about the cult of outrage. We make fun of him a lot, but I'm saying you're the the level of outrage I saw simply by by uh by saying I was disappointed in the guy. I'm just saying it's the cult of outrage. It's closer to home than you might think. Everybody's getting too outraged these days. It's okay to disagree because here's the thing I'm the same person I was a week ago and so are you you know if you think PewDiePie did nothing wrong and I disagree with that it's okay to disagree with me right we're, we're I mean I'm assuming we're, most of us here are adults and that's fucking fine I'm the same guy I was you know. Now, I know when I was on my drunken rant, I was like, fuck you, unsubscribe. <clears throat> if you disagree. And I think that, among other things, was taken out of context, although my approach was pretty ham-handed. I think the only thing I really want to apologize for is that drunken rant and to fans who were offended, who felt that my my anger, my my frustration was was geared towards them specifically. My point there, which I explained like a, you know, I basically was about as articulate as a uh, bag of dirt. Not very. My point, though, at the time <coughs> was that if you didn't watch the whole episode, if you just heard somewhere else that I was a hypocrite, if you just watched a video of a side-by-side -side of PewDiePie saying the N-word and then me being like saying the N-word in that iDubs episode and you came and left me a comment and disliked, then I was like, well, you know, fuck you. So I'm talking, I'm talking to these people who, who didn't bother to educate themselves on the full situation. But, but, you know, even if you're, even if you disagree with me, God bless you. It's your right. And that's what this podcast is all about. This is a topical. This is a place where we come. We talk about stuff. This is stuff that I'm, that's on my mind, that I'm thinking about, that's current. I mean, I don't think talking about what happened with, with PewDiePie is, is clickbaiting the guy for views. This is the whole freaking point of the show. I, by the way, the show, I mean, I, I, mean look, I, I don't need to. I don't need to clickbait. We're okay, all right? I'm not like desperate for more clicks to put it mildly 
<sighs> now, <coughs> so, and, and it's like, you know, talk about getting outraged on behalf of somebody else. Me and Felix were cool before and after I made that. I talked to him before and after I made that. Uh, we're all good. I mean, Felix even said on one of his streams, he's like, I don't know why people are getting so upset by this. It's not that big of a deal. Why is everyone blowing this up out of proportion? And I, I, I frankly, I agree. <clears throat> I think it's this outrage culture. I think there's a lot of people who are like, I can get a lot of views by blowing this up and taking it out of context. And, you know, about the context hypocritical thing, I don't think I'm a hypocrite. Again, you can disagree with me and God bless you. God bless your life and your soul. I hope you ascend to heaven when you die and that the... Uh, Paul, what's his name at the pearly gates? He gets, he gets on his, he gets on his fucking knees. He sucks your dick and he gives you a reach around too. He fingers your asshole. He milks your prostate. That's what they do at the pearly gates. It's called the pearly gates for a reason. And I hope that's what awaits you. <laughs> anyway, listen. In my, in my, you know, opinion, there's a clear difference between calling someone an N word. And referring to the word in a conversation about the N-word, which is what happened. That's what, that's what, that's when I used it. If you say, hey, you N-word, in anger and frustration, that's a bad way to use that word. It's a derogatory, it's insulting. You know, can you, but I, I think you should be able to have a conversation, talk, you know, we're talking about removing power from the word, right? That's why I chose to use the word in a relevant conversation about it. Instead of saying, Ian, you're known for saying the N word. I chose to actually say it because, you know, I agree. We can take certain powers away from it when using it to a reference. So I think that there is a clear crowbar separation between referring to the word in a conversation about the word and calling someone the word. If you disagree, God bless you. You know, that's fine. I'm the same person I was a week ago. So are you. May Peter fucking give you a rim job at the pearly gates. Okay. And so with that, I say, with that, I say to you that, you know what? I mean, God bless, God bless America. Oh, let me end on that. That's a good way to end things, right? Dan. Um, what? Hello? Hello? Ela? What's up? <laughs> oh, God. That, Ela, you didn't, you don't know anything about this, right? You didn't, you're not updated on all this. Ethan, I left for one day. Left for one day. And everything is ruined. <laughs> Listen, it's not my fault. It's your fault. <laughs> You know what's gonna happen. You think that I can handle myself without a care? You leave me in here. I can't. De I can't deal with this. You leave me in a in a room with Eric and Jack and two bottles of Hennessy. Man, whose idea was that? How many pizza slices did you have? A lot, dude. Like six, probably. That's all I was upset about. I didn't care about that. <laughs> he was like, "Fuck this shit. You just need to lose that weight." <laughs> Ela, I'm sorry for smoking. By the way, I'm never, I'm not smoking anymore. I'm done. That's the last cigarette you'll see me smoke on this podcast or on the street. <laughs> Good. So, anyway, did did you were you listening to that? Yeah, I was. How'd I do? Good. Fuck the haters. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> like that. What up, big pimps? <laughs> Dad, I couldn't tell if that was you or Dan. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> listen, yeah, I mean, listen to 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 the. I I, I just want to emphasize again to the fans who are watching, no, who yeah. are offended by that drunken rant. I do apologize. I yeah. I express yeah. myself like a like a damn drunken fool. You know, <laughs> you can disagree with me. God bless you. But I also do want to say. To every to the, everyone else, I want to say this. It's the bye, dog. <laughs> I wish it had a sound. Bye. We need to add a sound to and the then picture. To, <laughs> to the rest of my beautiful Fupa Troopers, I say this. 
Hi. The hi dog. <laughs> and to everyone else who realizes that you can disagree with somebody because you're still the same person you were before and afterwards, and it's just fine to have different opinions sometime, I offer you this, this olive branch of peace, <laughs> which is the dog with a thumbs up. <laughs> so, how are you doing out there, Hila? I'm good. Um, <laughs> look, look at that empty studio. <laughs> I just saw the just wide the shot. Wide. God damn it, it's um, too sad. Don't go to the wide. It's depressing. <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm okay. I'm really looking forward to come back home now. Yikes. Let uh, me tell you, dude. I ha I didn't realize how actually dependent I am on Hila until she was gone. <laughs> like, the first day you left was basically when all this shit hit the fan, and I'm just like, <laughs> boy, man. I've been and using paper. I've been using paper plates. And plastic <laughs> yeah, forks. I saw I saw your Instagram and, story. Yes, all disposable silverware, you know. And um, Ethan shows up to the podcast with no cameras. Yeah, yeah that, was, him, like, that was great. I, I don't know if I, I told you guys that in the last episode. Um, I think maybe you did. I, I don't showed know. up. I, I, I show. Yeah, I'm a disaster. I can barely wipe my ass. I can wipe my ass, incidentally, with baby wipes. It's always clean. But here's here's a little update I want to give you, Ela. Until you're back, Ela's back very soon, like five days now. I can't wait. On Wednesday. Wednesday, my dudes. It's Wednesday, my dudes. Meme. Um, <laughs> guess what? I have a huge announcement for everybody. The Bradbury Boys, Mo, <laughs> and E. T. You know them. You love them. Spider Man and Elsa. Pranks in the hood. Sunset Park, the legends are coming in next Friday. I cannot wait. Dude, I'm freaking excited. Barack Obama, <laughs> your presidency's over. Irrelevant. Trump, I, w I wouldn't pass, but I, I, would, I would put you in the queue behind these guys. I can't believe it. We're going to be sitting with them in the same room. It's going to be fireworks, both, guys. Both of them, too. Both of them are coming. I tried to get Austin Post in here, but I think he's on tour. He'd, he, uh. he would make the perfect accent to that episode, <laughs> but regardless. I am I am so excited. They've been super nice, honestly. I've been talking to them in the DMs. They've been really gracious. They seem like really excited to come on, so... I'm pumped, man. I'm super <laughs> excited. So make sure to tune in a week from today. We got the Bradbury boys on deck. I'm Ethan Bradbury. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait. That's the best way to come back. Whew. Um. Well, anyway, here's another weird one. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but but Jeff Dunham's agent contact. I've been in contact what? with him, and <laughs> Jeff Dunham might be coming on. Wait, really? I thought you were kidding. I saw. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Jeff Dunham's agent from UTA. I've been talking to him, and he's tr he's promoting his new Netflix here, a uh, uh, comedy special. And he's he's <laughs> his agent was like, "Do you want Jeff Dunham on?" And I was like, "Uh, fuck yes," but I was like, for the sake of of clarity, and just I don't want you to look like an asshole. We 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 have a little bit. We it's a bit of a meme. <laughs> I just want you to know that. And he, he actually didn't know that. He's like, okay, I'll look into that. I'll make uh, sure it's cool. But I felt like it would it would have been fucked up to be like, yeah, I'm a big fan. Bring him in. Yeah. Bring the not, puppets. He's, especially he's the spicy jalapeno. What? We're not going to hear back from them. Yeah, no, we won't hear back. But it, <laughs> no, even after I told him, it seemed like a possibility. He was like, okay, give me your schedule and shit. I was like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. You know, it'd be funny if I made my own ventriloquy puppets and did a act for him and asked him to <laughs> rate it. Well, I'll bring a Jeff Dunham fuck doll. Of course. <laughs> I'll give him one. Oh, man. I don't know. He's oh ready for God. that. I feel almost bad. Anyway, listen, Eli, <laughs> what time is it there? It is 1.30 a.m. All right. And I really don't want to wake up everyone in my parents' house. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Yeah. Well, 
thanks for calling in. And, um, ugh, dude, I need you back here, like, quick. Like, man, <laughs> everything's falling apart. I mean, the podcast the, is no, one thing, but good. you should see our house. There's, like, holes in the ceiling. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so bad there. You have a lot of work to do when you come back. No, it's, uh, I want everyone to know that Ethan is doing a lot to, he's do, taking a lot on himself, and I appreciate it. Thanks, yo. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hey, you gotta hold it down for your, for the one that holds you down. <laughs> I don't know, whatever, it's whatever. All right, stop with that. All right, All right. Yo. All right. Cool. Love you. So, appreciate you. Um, and have fun, I will. Everybody. And I'll see you soon. All right. God bless. Papa Bye. bless. Bye, dog. Bye, dog emoji. <laughs> <coughs> All righty. Now that we've got that out of the way, I hope. Uh, and by and by the way, I'm just incoming every drama channel taking. A completely reasonable statement out of context to desperately squeeze every last view out of this fucking thing. And so to those channels out there who are currently editing this clip right now, I say, have a Coke, crack open a soda pop, and chill out. Gaze, have a gaze. That shit's on YouTube, man. Just don't tell them that you're using an unlicensed gaze because you may actually get in trouble with that. Guys, we have all kinds of shit to talk about left. Um, this one really stuck out to me. Logan Paul went over to our roast me. And he seemed, in my opinion, he seems like a perfect candidate for, for the roast me, right? Um, it, he titled it, apparently I faked my colorblindness and everyone hates my brother, hit me. Well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think people like you necessarily either. He's like, everybody hates my brother. Like, well. Apparently I faked my colorblindness. I don't think I ever said that, by the way. I know that's what pissed off Logan. It was like, I've heard, I've, I've heard through the grapevine that he genuinely hates my guts. Although he did recently congratulate me on winning the lawsuit, which I thought was was really nice in a video. But um, I never said he was colorblind. I think me and Ian just, we just, um, we thought he exaggerated it, like, completely. I, I mean, I, I, I do think the guy's colorblind, but for the record, I don't think he's lying about it. Um, I don't buy it. He's fucking, no, I'm kidding. He can see it. But anyway... So he posted on, on our roast me, and I've never seen this before. Zero points. It's got a straight up zero. I mean, this is the best roast they could ever, ever do. It's at a straight up zero. And this is, I mean, you know, for a celebrity. That is really something, man. I was shocked when I saw that. It's crazy. Um, let's see what we got here. I spent a good 15 minutes waiting, writing a roast for Jake Paul before realizing it's Logan. This is how interchangeable you two are to someone who doesn't give two shits about your play pretend internet fights. The fact that it got zero, that's incredible. That the hive man all came together. I was like, nope. Your face reminds me of the Vine videos. Stupid, pointless, and I can only look at it for five seconds. This was the big one that everyone was just like, wow. Game over. The only thing more obnoxious than your ego is the mess on top of your head. You pander to a young audience is too naive to understand how unoriginal and mediocre you are. Thankfully, I feel safe knowing that your reign in the entertainment industry will be short-lived and that you will ultimately fade away like the rest of the conformists to pop culture. Learn from your mistakes, unlike your brother, and move on. Pretty good. Pretty spicy. Your brother is an immature asshole, hated by everyone, and he's still more famous than you. Now that, I like that. Anyway, God bless you. Hey, hey, get him, bye. That's just me out here, huh? Shit. It's just me and a microphone and a camera, huh? 
All right. Next story. Um, everybody, by the way, everybody that's been ordering merch from our h3h3shop.com, thank you so much, and God bless you for supporting us. This is the best way to support us directly. You know, we're new to this, so people have been emailing on customer support, and we haven't been answering it because we, like, don't even know where they where they've gone. But we finally got the customer support signed up. The shirts are going out now. So if you have any problems, what's the support email, Dan? Shop at h3h3productions.com. We will answer you within a day. That's my pledge to you, or Dan, Ian, and everyone back there is completely and utterly... No, I'm not going to do anything. But I would urge them to please get on that. Um, Yikes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Fucking hell, man. You know what I I was doing the other day? I was on the phone with my insurance company trying to get some insurance and they do this thing. And I know you've all been through it where you call in and they make you answer in voice. They don't even give you the option to push a number. Hello. And thank you for calling. Please tell me the reason you're calling today. And it's not like press one for shit. It's just like you have to answer in voice. I want insurance. And it's like, I kept going in this fucking loop. It makes you feel so fucking stupid. Like you're yelling at your phone. You get so angry. There's not even another person there. Like yelling at my phone, an inanimate object. It's crazy. You ever, you ever done that, Dan? I just curse constantly. I just say, fuck you. Connect me to a person. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And eventually, they, they put somebody. <laughs> really? Up. Do you think they register the fuck you and they're just I like? I hope so. I hope it's all recorded, and their supervisor is reviewing it later that afternoon. It's in the banks. the the um, <laughs> The uh, NSA's got there somewhere someday to blackmail you, dropping n bombs at the answering machine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. At the end, you're just like, "Fuck you! Stop! Stop! Stop!" I'll en- end up mashing all the buttons. I swear to God, I spent 30 minutes just trying to ca- contact. It's it's insane. Can we please? I want to feel like a human. These machines are not smart enough yet. That's a story I have written here. How'd that go? Not that good. That one didn't really land that well. It's kind of hard. Five out of ten. I'm Five just, out of ten. I'm just here by myself here, guys. Yikes. Um, You're doing great, buddy. <sighs> Uh, you know what's my favorite show of all time? I just want to, I need to plug this. Nathan, for you. I don't get why the, this is the best show since Seinfeld. The best comedy since Seinfeld. Nathan, for you. It's on Comedy Central. The fourth season, season is just coming back. I'm not paid. Okay, I'm not a sponsor of the show. I genuinely am <clears throat> obsessed. It's made by absolutely uh, Tim and Eric's production company. Um, and like the show is just complete madness. It takes them like a year or two years to make eight episodes because the way they shoot it is just so messed up. It's about this guy, Nathan, and he, he comes up with creative, um, business solutions, right. On how to thrive. Like there's this episode in the last season where he's trying to sell. This guy has an electronic store. He can't compete with Best Buy. So he's like, all right, they have a price match. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sell our, our TVs for $1. And Best Buy has got to price match it. During that time, we're going to go into Best Buy and buy all their inventory for $1. Here's the, here's the other catch. We don't want to actually make sure that anyone can come in the store and buy the damn TV for a dollar. So he ma- first he creates this little tiny door. And, behind, and he says there's a dress code, so people come trying to sh- buy it. And he's like, sorry, dude, you have to come in a tuxedo. Then he's got this little tiny door. When you crawl through it, there's a live alligator there. You have to walk past that alligator and, and get the TV to redeem the $1 sale. And the, he's so deadpan. It's so, he's so serious. 
and the new season starting now. I'm freaking obsessed. I swear to you now on everything that is holy on the gaze of Brazzo. I swear this to you. Watch this show. Is I'm I'm I've never laughed so hysterically, and I feel I feel compelled to talk about it because it it doesn't get enough love. It's fly. It's flown so under the radar. It's so well produced. It's so well made. The packaging of the show is like ridiculous because just like this Blaine, plain looking guy, Nathan for you. It's not a very spicy title, you know. But my God, it it's on Comedy Central. Like I, I saw a preview of the new season, which um, starting next week, he's got. You can't sell food at a stadium, right? And he knows he he wants to sell chili as a business, and I guess he got shut down or someone there got shut down. So he has this whole fucking suit full of plastic that is full all the way up with chili. Then he puts a huge suit over it, so he looks like one of these fat sumo inflatable gags. And he's got a nozzle here, so he's just going up to people in the stadium and be like, "Do you guys want chili?" Like. I'll, I'll hook you up with a discount, $5. And he squirts the chili out of his sleeve into a cup. I'm telling you, it's, ge- it's genius. I'm dying every time. Please do yourself a favor and watch this. I mean, this is not a sponsor. I'm just genuinely enthused. It's so hard to find a good show out there. It really is impossible, especially comedies. God damn it. If anything, go watch Nathan for you. All right. There's one more thing I want to show you. Actually, you know, let's take a, let's take a um, quick thanks to our sponsors here. I got to pee. I've been hitting the I've been hitting the coffee and the soda pops hard. So let me thank our sponsors um, today, my friends. This episode is brought to you by Video Blocks. Video Blocks is a stock photo and video site. Here's the thing. I've actually been using this for a year. It's, I love it. iDubs actually recommended it to me because he had like this incredible stock footage. It was like, yo, where, where do you get this shit? So all the time you go to stock photo, uh, we, all of a sudden you have you go to stock photo websites and this shit costs like $500, dude. Um, it's insane. It's like a picture of a dude sitting on a bench in front of a fucking dog taking a shit. It's like they have something for everything. $500. Get real. I'll send Ian the intern out there. The fucking disposable camera. You telling me that's worth $500? This is $150 per year. If you go to videoblocks.com slash H3, $150 per year, and you get everything. You get all the goods by Fred's. That's V-I-D-E-O-B-L-O-C-K-S dot com slash H3. If you've ever been in the need of a quick soundbite, video, or image, we'd love for you to talk about. Oh, my God. Um, it's, it's, it's seriously so useful. Um, get studio quality stock for a fraction of the cost. Download all stock videos in your heart's desire with the member library, including HD and After Effects templates. You want to know how... Dan, can you show the, this all these little um, transitions we make, like send in the news with Dan? All this shit we've done. Dan makes that with video blocks. They have these templates you download. It's so freaking easy. So useful. Plus, get exclusive discounts on millions of additional marketplace clips where you save 40% and the original artists take home 100% of the sale price. All content is royalty-free, so you can use it in commercial or personal projects. New clips are added regularly, so there's always something fresh to download. If you are an editor or a creator and you want something royalty-free for your project or you just want some spicy templates and hot videos and pics, Head on over to videoblocks.com slash H3. $149 for a year's membership. And I promise you, I haven't regretted it. Not even a little bit. So thank you to them. Next up, we've got, you know them, you love them. It's audible.com slash H3 podcast. Audible. Listen, life is boring. It's a snooze fest. 
I mean, you take a walk, but that f- I'm falling asleep. Literally falling asleep on a walk. All of a sudden, you put in some earbuds. You got a walkie-talkie in your pocket. Or a Walkman. Yeah, I'm back in the 80s. Pipe in some of those hot um, audio books into your ear, right? Into your ear. Audio books. Audible's got it all. Gavish. Um... Go to audible.com slash h3 podcast. Download a free audio book and listen to it after you sign up. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, I gotta say, this copy's a little messed up here. I'm panicking. I'm having a panic attack. No, it's not that bad. <sighs> Go to audible.com slash it. You guys know what Audible is. They've got a huge selection. Tons of, of audiobooks. Narrated by beautiful, creamy voices. Celebrities. Here's what I'm going to recommend you do. Sirens of Titan. I talked about Kurt Vonnegut in the, in the last episode as my favorite author. This guy has, has probably had a bigger influence on my life of any artist at all. And I would say Slaughterhouse Five is my favorite book that he's written, but right next to it is Sirens of Titan. This is a total space romp. It's it is such a wild ride. It's like um, it's like the Odyssey in space. It's crazy. It's about like religion and brainwashing, time travel, and and all throughout. It's just it's it's got this um, wonderful comedy dark comedy, commentary on humanity, and the way he writes it is just so accessible. I promise this book is going to stay with you and impact you for years to come. It's called Sirens of Titan by Kurt Vonnegut, and you can go to audible.com slash h3 and get it for free with your free audiobook with a 30-day free trial, guys. So please head on over to audible.com slash h3 podcast. God bless. And finally, we have Nature Box. Oh my God, what is this? Age Cheddar Lentil Loops? Yes, please. Ah! Listen, we all want to eat better. But when it comes to snacks, I won't chew into the mic, actually. I've made that mistake too many times. Sometimes I feel like the whole world is delicious and a billion calories versus boring and tasteless. It does not have to be that way. Nature Box has 100 snacks that taste good and are actually better for you. All snacks are made of high-quality, simple ingredients, which means no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners, so you can feel good while you're stuffing your face, which is what I do with it. You can eat it like a normal person. Listen, if you go there, you're going to get free, three free snacks. If you go to naturebox.com slash h3, I recommend the aged Cheddar lentil loops and the, oh my goodness, the uh, sriracha, what do you call those cashews? The spicy cashews? Dan's obsessed. Sriracha. Sriracha cashews. Yeah. Would you please forget about it? There's also this coconut cashews, which are, 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 are incredible. When it comes to snacks, nobody beats the nature box because it's slam packed full of good shit. It's going to get you going and it's healthy. God damn it. I'm pissed because nobody else does snacks like Nature Box. I'm angry. So simple. Just go to naturebox.com slash H3. Choose the snacks you want, and it's delivered right to your door. And I'll tell you what else. There's no risk. If you ever try a snack you don't like, they'll replace it for free. I mean, come on. So right now. Naturebox is offering H3 podcast fans three free snacks with your first order. Go to naturebox.com slash H3 for free, three free snacks. So though, thank you to our sponsors, guys. If you want an audio book, go check out The Sirens of Titan. I promise you will not regret it. You get it free. If you want some snacks, head on over to Naturebox. And if you want some... Goddamn stock footage. 
Video Blocks is the place. So thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, you guys, for, for hanging around. I really need to urinate. When we come back, we've got a ton of good, good, good stuff on the way. So stay tuned, and I appreciate you. Be right back. Welcome back to H3 Podcast, Me Without My Care. <clears throat> I feel like that'd be a title of a great, a great blockbuster, really emotional stuff, Academy stuff, Academy Award winning stuff. Me Without My Care, starring Tom Cruise as, or yeah, who would be the care in this case? Probably more like a, I like Tom Cruise as the care. It just reminds me of Rain Man. And I'm the I'm the Rain Man apparently in this analogy. Who would be a good? Who would play a good Ela Care in that movie? Any thoughts out there? Like I want to say Gwyneth Paltrow. I think she could I was like thinking somebody that has kind of like a you know warm, caring aura. Gwyneth Paltrow. That's a, that's a good one. Like Gwyneth I mean, Paltrow. Dench. I like know she's she, a little old, but Gwyneth Paltrow. She's a bit of a mess. Her life isn't in order. I'm not. This isn't about Elon. I'm just pitching this movie to Hollywood. Okay, don't 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 draw an analogy. If there's any executive watching this, this is my idea. Can't nick it. It's a C. There's a there's a invisible C next to it, which means copyright. Gwyneth Paltrow. Her life's a little bit of a mess. She's got a she's got a, uh, for lack of a better word, retarded little <laughs> trooper. And man, one day she just takes the wrong bus. And 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 her little retarded brother is 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 misses the bus, and she's like, "Oh my God, where's where's uh, Ethan?" It's it's like Home Alone kind of, except it's it's a low functioning. It's more like Baby's Day Out. It's it's a low functioning version of Rain Man, and without the intelligence, and it's gonna be great. I'm excited for that. By the way, apologies for saying retard. Apologize to everyone. By the way, again, you know, yeah, I don't know. Can you say retard? Is that offensive? Because again, I do think there's a difference. Between... <laughs> Just stop. You're acting retarded right now. Okay. Christ. It's a good nosedive fast. Guys, I wanted to update you. <clears throat> um,. I know a lot of people have been saying, where's the H3 videos? Where's the H3 videos? What is it? Just the podcast now? And I just want to assure you, I agree. It's been a long time since we made an H3 video, and I want to badly. I, I explained previously, but I want to reemphasize, we just moved into a new house. And it's a total, everything is just a total flipping mess, right? And so we're building our home studio, which is still a couple days of, away from being done. We've just been so busy. Elo with her family, all these chores and everything that comes with getting a new house and stuff like that. So we've been, I, I cannot wait to make a new H3 video. And I hope that we will continue to normality of making it at least once a week coming up very soon. I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to make one this weekend for sure. I've got a good spicy one on deck. The video is probably going to be in a really large echoey room that sounds awful and looks worse. Because the home studio is not done, but hey, you know, come hell or high water, the goofs, they come. The boofs, they come quicker. And the damn, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, what was the one I was talking about that Ela was really not approved of? The spaffs. Oh, you don't want to know about the spaffs, but they're out there. All right. Enough about all that shit. Oh, we got some callers. Why don't we take some calls? That's always a joy, eh? Shmi, we got Shmi on the phone. Hello, Shmi. Talk to me. <laughs> right? Hi, how's it going? Hello. Um, hi, so my question was, um, what music are you and Ela into at the moment? Oh, okay. Thanks for the question. Appreciate you. No problem. <laughs> Music. Well, I think my favorite artist straight up is Kendrick Lamar. He's killing it. That guy is reimagining. I mean, he's bringing like hip hop back, boy, from the 90s. And I've always been a big hip hop fan, but 
I mean, there's a lot of other great people making hip hop, but I think Kendrick is just like on another level, man. He's just creaming it. Like, how many albums in a row has that guy been crushing it? From Good Kid, Mad City, like Section Eighty, <clears throat> probably his is my least favorite album of his, but he's got he was killing it. He had tracks killing it on that one. Good Kid, Mad City, bangers all day. Still wasn't even on the radar. Totally comes out with To Pimp a Butterfly. That's when I discovered him. I found like um, his music video all right on YouTube. And I was just like, what is this? This is like 90s hip hop. This is the good shit back. Yo. And I, I must have listened to Pimp a Butterfly like a hundred times. I mean, that album is just mind bending and how thematic it is. Um, how everything ties together. And how he incorporates like jazz and hip hop into this just it's a whole new fusion. I mean it's really musical. A lot of people criticize hip hop. They're like, Oh, it's not music. It's just some dude talking. Not Kendrick. That guy's out there making jazz. He's making funk. I I you you have got to listen to Kendrick Lamar if you have not. And then, you know, after To Pimp a Butterfly, he had Untitled Unmastered. And this was just a mixtape he threw together in between um, Damn, which was his newest one, and To Pimp a Butterfly was with all the leftovers. And that album was incredible. And this is just the shit he had laying around. That shit was insane. Damn comes out. I mean, clearly it was critically acclaimed, but I feel like even still it was underrated. It was a... Uh, that dude reinvented himself completely because To Pimp a Butterfly was like jazzy. He had this whole sound that he had like worked up to and mastered. And then he he drops damn and it's like all that shit's out the window. That takes so much courage to like be like, I'm I'm the master at this. I'm gonna start all over now with a new sound. And he killed it. I love it. I love artists who can make um who can make like thematic albums that really work. You know? That's the whole point of an album, right? should be a collection. It should go, it should be like a collect, like the Beatles were amazing at it. A lot of the people from the 60s were, were great at it. But it was kind of like a lost art, these like thematic albums. And I think he's, he's really, really good at it. So definitely Kendrick Lamar. And then obviously my boys, Mac DeMarco right now, if you're talking about contemporary rock and roll, Mac DeMarco, forget about it. Friend of mine, hoping to get him on the show soon. But he is fucking killing it. You know what's funny? I saw Mac DeMarco on Charlie Rose, who is like this serious journalist. He was on like 60 Minutes. Last week he had Steve Bannon on. I was watching it in bed. I was like, this is fascinating stuff. And then the next week he's got Mac DeMarco. I was like, what on earth? He's killing it. Then, of course, your boy Post Malone. Without being said, um... Yeah, that's it. Love them all. I mean, Post is killing it. He's such a young guy. He's so talented, and he's accomplished so much already. Yikes! What a what a what a god! All those guys. Um, thanks for the question. I had more to say about that than I thought. We got another call coming from B Bones One Five Zero. Talk to me, doggy. Hey, how's it going? Hey, dude. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of lag. But, okay. Um, so, uh, what do you do to get rid of stress? Wow, good question. Masturbate lots and lots. Chronic master. I'm masturbating right now. Now, thanks for that question. That is actually a really good question. Thanks, doggy. A slick, tiny little <laughs> vibrating. Tube. What? <laughs> Dan apparently soundboarded that. That's funny. Uh, um, you know what, man? That is such a good question. Because in my line of work, I'm always at a computer. And my free, I, I, my free time and my work and my, everything I do in my life kind of melt. I don't have like a clear separation between work and free time. It's actually a huge, huge, huge problem for myself. I've, this is a problem I've actually been thinking about. Like, what do I do, man? 
I need like a fucking hobby. I need to buy some wood and start whittling wood or something. What do people do with their free time? I don't know. I used to play video games. I'm, I'm find, I find myself growing bored with video games. You know? Who can play this shit? I just bought Divinity 2, which is like this new RPG that everyone's loving. I fire it up. And I'm like, after like 20 minutes, I'm like, this is so fucking boring. You're supposed, there's like tomes. You're supposed to read like tomes. I'm like, oh my God, dude. If I'm going to, I'll just get a novel. Like there's no way some guy in Divinity 2 is writing to, like a two page tome. The treasure map is more, I don't know. So I know you got a lot of you guys like video games. I love video games, but more and more I find myself, maybe it's just, I don't know. Like my favorite video games has got to be shit like, I mean, I play a lot of Overwatch. That shit gets boring. It's like, how much can you play that, you know? What's your favorite video game of all time? Favorite video games of all time. Recently, the new Zelda. I was, I was, I think that was just a great game. It sucked me in. It was like incredible. It had this, this sense of adventure because there was no rendering or loading and the, the view distance in the game, like how far you can see was like never ending. It was just like awe-inspiring. You could be on one end of the map and see it like a volcano that's on the completely other side of the map and actively walk towards it and, and, and it feels so real and adventurous. I was completely, completely enthralled by that game. Maybe it's just a good game. I don't know. I mean, other than that, it's like the classics. Half-Life. Really liked, um, really liked the Bio, or not Bioshock, the, um, I did like that one, but what was the Commander Shepard meme? Aspect. Yeah, obviously the new one was a, was a steaming bucket of cum. Yeah. Not good. How the fuck after like who? Maybe that's why Valve's not making Half Life Three because they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the legacy with a steaming pile of fucking couches. How do don't you say it? Don't say it, even if it's true. <laughs> don't Can't say it. it. It's too real. <laughs> what do I do to relieve stress? I don't know. I'll go for a walk, and I'll listen to Audible while I'm out there. There you go. Because walks are just so boring. I'll listen to audible.com slash H3 podcast. Um, thank you for that question. We got one more from Liv. Liv, how are you, buddy? What's good? Hi. I was actually going to ask what book or uh, movie you'd like to see brought to the big screen or, like, remade. <laughs> Dude, love it. Thank you for that question. <laughs> so this is actually serendipitous. <clears throat> and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but Siren of Titan, the book I recommended at audible.com slash H3 podcast, is actually the one thing I would love to see brought to brought to film because it's it's so insane. Like the scope of it is so insane. You've got Earth, you've got space, you've got bases on the moon and on Mars. At a certain point, you're traveling to the to the. It's called Sirens of Titan because it's about Titan, the uh, one of the moons of of Saturn that is is supposedly supposedly very likely um, candidate for having some kind of life on it. And so, in the story, you eventually go to the center. Of the moon of Titan, you're all over the the the, the uh, solar system, and um, it would be super hard to translate. But man, it would be a spectacular. If I ever took a shot at at um, screenwriting or or adapting, I, I would I would do that. I'd be fucking a blast. All right, let me show you some memes here. This thing, you guys know, I love sucking Elon discs, Elon Musk's dick. I wonder if he has any, like, cybernetic improvements to his penis. Definitely. Because he's about... Without a question. I mean, he's the... He's Mr. Cybernetic going to the future. He's got a... Must have a robotic dick that's just hard all the time. You can, can you imagine that if you put your dick in and you're like... You're like, how's that, baby? She's like, a little wider. Push a button and your girth, like, increases. It's too much, a little bit less. She's like, that's right. Is that sexual harassment? Is that what you just did when you said that to me? 
I would. Mm. I'm telling you, ladies, every, all the ladies out there are like, what up? All the guys, too. Elon, where are you at? Look at this. <laughs> Here's a picture of Elon on a zip tie. It kills me. All right, Elon, this is called a zip line. And the humans, they enjoy this? They enjoy it very much, Elon. Then I shall enjoy it as well. <laughs> Look at his fucking face. It's like, he's so unamused by it. He totally is like a Data-esque Star Trek character. Hmm. Then I shall enjoy it as well. I don't, whoever made this meme is incredible. I love the di- the how dry the dialogue is. They enjoy it very much, Elon. <laughs> Had to share that with you, as I am a chronic Elon Musk dick rider. With his girth, with his girth, um, his girth customization. I need that girth customization upgrade. Is that an option, like the insanity mode? In the Tesla? <laughs> yeah, it's an upgrade option. That. Girth optimization. You like it tiny? You like it fat? We can do it all. Oh, here's some news. <laughs> you guys probably heard about this massive earthquake in um, Mexico City. 7.1. You know, there was an earthquake in L.A. a couple nights ago. 3.1 in Hollywood. I was sitting home by myself like a lonely ass loser, which is what I am. And I was talking, I think I was talking to Elon, I was like, getting a little bit of a ride. I was like, was that a fun, was that an earthquake, you know? Because it was kind of, it was, wasn't subtle, but it just went and it went away. And I'm like, well, it's possible I'm losing my mind. I'm basically in a deprivation tank right now, which is an empty house. Anyway, it turns out I'm not crazy, at least not for that reason. But this footage of the 7.1 earthquake in Mexico, which is quite, quite massive. 250 people died, including 20 children, after a school collapsed. Yikes. Central Mexico was hit by a 7.1 magnitude earthquake on Tuesday. That is, that is rough. Yeah, 7.1 is no joke. I mean, this footage is, is, I've never seen anything like it. On the water, there's just something really incredible about this footage. Here, take a look at this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a bad idea to be on this boat. <laughs> You're probably safe there, lady. Don't. But look look at the earth is like moving as if it was on the water. Which is essentially what an earthquake is. It liquefies the the earth. And it moves in wavelength in waves. Oh my god. Look at them. They're having a great time as the as the um the Mexicans are like, okay, is my family dead? Hey, hey, let's have a beer. And that dude's like, please don't let my family, my house collapse on my family. But look at that. I mean, it's really, really interesting. I mean, just beyond the horror of it, just like this modern age where everything's filmed is, is crazy. So I had read actually that why the, uh, Looks like the ground is like rippling like that. Sure. And a lot of Mexico City is actually built like kind of on these weird floating islands, like the whole city. Really? Is. Yeah. They were uh, originally built all the way back in like the the Aztec times. F- You're telling me Mexico City is built on something the Aztecs the, made? The city's huge, but there's like a core area of it that, yeah, is like semi aquatic. God, that's so actually, I remember learning about that. That the Aztecs were expanding their city into the water. Right. Those crazy fucks, man. Pretty badass. So is this because of the gays having sex, or was this just something that happens sometimes on Earth? Oh, no. It's the gays. For sure. Can you gays please stop fucking? Do you not see all the devastation you're causing across this planet? Hurricanes. Earthquakes. Must Gay sex must be amazing. If God hates it that much, by Rocks the way, the world. must be if if God if God hates dick on dick action that much, it must be great. In fact, I want to try it. I'm gonna rub my dick on some dudes, and like the earth is gonna crack on. Should, open should I send Ian in? Um, I wonder if that. I, I know there's certain laws that govern, you know, using an intern. Like, um, 
I'm, I'm gonna have to check on on if you're allowed to ha- to rape your interns. It, he he's consenting. It's fine. Oh, he's consenting in that he's case. He's shaking his head no. And that <laughs> I can it, see it in wait, his eyes. if there's consent involved, then I'm not interested. <laughs> Kidding. <coughs> anyway. Going down this this whole rabbit hole of, of earthquakes, I found this other video that was just crazy. Look at this shit. There's, I actually don't know the details of this one, when and where it was. 2015, not that long ago, goddamn. Look at these, look at these sorry some bitches in this pool. Look how, this shit blew my mind. Watch this. I love this guy trying to swim out. Whoa. Like, look at this poor oh, bastard. Shit. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, I would have incorrectly thought that a pool would be like a relatively safe place to be, but apparently well, not. Well, I mean, he's fine, you know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but, 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 I guess if it goes long enough, shit, you could probably get. Get a get slammed against the side, it can fuck you up. I, I just I don't know. It's like it's hard to imagine how much the raw power there is in an earthquake. But watching that footage, it's like holy shit. Yeah, that's nutty. Um, and then that led me again. I'm just going down this water motif of just like the energy that's held in water. I saw this. This happened like a week ago in China. Some dam bust open. I mean, water is is just such a te- it's crazy. <clears throat> Look at this shit, man. It's terrifying. <laughs> like this, so this dam broke in China. I mean, all that potential energy stored up behind this this concrete wall, just charging forward. This is all just gravity, essentially, potential energy. And look at the force of that. But I was saying, like, the technology now, like, we don't miss a thing. When that yeah, tsunami... Seriously. When that tsunami hit Japan, the videos from that were, were, were disturbing like nothing I had ever seen before. Of, like, a, you know, a 30-foot wave crashing into the coastline. Look at this, man! People trying to save those cars need to just give the fuck up and run. There was some shit going looking out. <laughs> this one fucking these poor bastards. This one guy on the truck in the bottom left. He's trying to like drive out on a crane. Not he's backing out on a crane. And then these guys have cars and they're they're honking at this guy on the crane. I'm laughing because it's so fucked up. Look at this shit on the bottom left. Yeah, fuck the crane at that. Look point. at this. Look at this. It's it's done. The crane won't it won't back up. And now these guys are fucked. Yikes. That's what happens, man. You try this is like this shit's not na- scary. It, it's not natural. We're trying to tame the beast. We're trying to tame the damn natural forces. Man, some of those, I don't know. I'm sure everyone's seen the, the footage from the Japanese tsunami. That was absolutely, absolutely mind-bending shit. Um, actually, I want to pull some, some one up here to show you guys. Cause that... that, that there's one of it like crashing across like a all across northern Japan. There was one of the Oh man. Hey, can you try to find that Ian? There's this one video in particular of a tsunami crashing on the beachhead and there's a little road with cars trying to escape like drive away from it and it it is just uh, uh, you'll you'll know it when you see it. It's like just cr- it makes this enormous impact on the ocean and just like a almost like a 50 it's like out of a sci-fi movie 
for pizza's sake. I think I might have it for you here. Meanwhile, let me take a call real fast. Melon, talk to me. Tell me what's good. Melon? Hey, what's up? Hey, sorry. Hey, what up? Um, I have a question for you, which is, um, where do you realistically think your life would be if YouTube didn't exist? Great question. Thank you for it. <laughs> I'd be... <laughs> Yikes. <sighs> Dude, I don't know. That's the, that's the weird thing about life, right? It's like, I feel like everybody's got this potential inside of them, and it's just like there's so many roads and possibilities for, for different ways for your life to work out, you know? When I finished college, I was like, I have a complete unknown journey before me in a time where it seemed like all none of my friends had jobs. Nobody could could make a living. The only option was being a waiter, which is what I, me and almost all my friends were when we finished college or when we were in college, and that was it. I remember... When me and Ela were in Santa Cruz, like the red bell pepper story, when we were so broke, there was some company offering of like a forty thousand dollar per year job for some entry level shit, and you know, like marketing something. And they they're like entry level junior marketer must have five years of experience, like you know how the world is th these days. And I spent like you know. Must have spent like 15 hours just working on my resume and writing all this dumbass shit on it. Obviously, they never even called me back. Um, but I remember thinking like, oh, my God, 40,000. Our troubles are over. But what would I do? I mean, when I when I moved to Israel with Ela, luckily, there was way more opportunities there because I actually had a marketable skill. I, I spoke English. I even had a degree in English literature, so I had a marketable skill there. Everybody here speaks English. So that actually enabled me to get a job where I could make like 30, 40. I think I was making like, at my peak, I was making like $5,000 a month. What is that? It's like 40000 It's not that much fucking money. But, you know, I felt like I was balling. You should always feel like you're balling, man. Fuck that. You you always gotta you guys feel good, dude, if you're hustling like <clears throat> even when, when me and Ela were waiting tables and we're like, we're making a hundred bucks a day. It's like, cool, dude. We're getting by. But I mean, without that, well, yeah, I, I, I was in close with my boss. We were in an industry in Israel that I didn't give a fuck about. That I I had no passion for it, but it was a day job. My my boss wanted me to become a partner with him in a new company he was making, and that's probably what I would be doing now, you know. But you know, on, on the other hand, it's not all doom and gloom. It was something like I was like, "This is okay. I it's okay to have a normal life and make ends meet, and have a job and support you and your family, take a vacation." You know, buy yourself some nice stuff. It's okay, dude. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in working at McDonald's. There's no shame in being a waiter or working at a job you don't like. It's fucking, it's life, man. Peaks and valleys. Shit, now that I've got my dream job, still work. Fucking probably, I'm probably on a whole more stressed out now generally than I was back then. You know, back then you go, you sit your shitty job, you surf Reddit for five hours, you work for three hours, you come home, and you're fucking done. The stress of work is lifted from your brain because you don't give a fuck, and they know you don't give a fuck. But, you know, when you have a dream job and you care about it, you, 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 there's no limit. You don't. You don't have these limits. Like thinking about it all the time. The stakes are are high all the time. There's no such thing as a weekend. There's no such thing as like, uh, it's Saturday. It's Sunday. I'm not going to think about work anymore. You know, I have to go make an H3 video after this. I'm going to go home and I'm going to work all weekend. But I love it. You know, it's my job. I have. It's my dream job. But I'm just saying, 
the grass is definitely always greener. And the thing I miss the most about back then is that weekend, right? That those vacations I could go and leave for a week or two on vacation and come back. I feel like I can't really do that shit anymore. So I'm just saying, man, it's cool. There's no shame in having a job that you don't like. There's no shame in no shame, dude. Not in being out there grinding your salt of the earth. You're a good, God blessed human. What else? Where were we? Oh, you have that video, Dan? I think it's the one you were talking about. I linked it to you. Where the fuck did it go? How do I... What the fuck? And like, the pop-up window went away. It's in uh, our private channel. Am I not there? Because I'm at the bottom and I don't see it. Can you send it to me again? Yeah. Hold on. There it is. All right, let's see if this is it. We were talking about this tsunami video. Oh, that's pleasant. Let's 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 listen to Oh, good. Good. Let's listen to some soft jazz as one of the greatest catastrophes. Right, is this a sick joke? This is fucking me. I'm going to mute this. This is sick. This isn't the one I was thinking of, but this is this is a good one. I mean, the force of this is that you can, you can, you didn't even have an, a choice to escape. Like these guys in China, they're like, "Let's get the hell out of here." These people are just like, "Oops, I'm I'm the ocean is now in my city." Here, oh, maybe this is the one. Look at this shit. The ocean is just like. My my border is no Damn. longer. Look, I mean that is that Ooh, is boy. the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, especially living in a coastal city ourselves. That's fun. Well, th- uh, there's no fault line off the coast of California. Actually, that's true. So we're we are s- safe for tsunamis. Sadly, Japan not is, so much. Is, is, it has a fault line. I need to watch that again. Right off the coast, there's a bridge. It's a strong structure. There, it is replaced with a house. <laughs> I mean, this shit okay. is just... Oh, it's a cell bridge. It's nutty. There was actually an... Oh, this is the one. This is the one. Or one of them. Here, this... All right. Watch this guy. He's like, nope. Nope. This isn't actually the one, but... Um... Okay, yeah, turn around oh, there, buddy. Jesus. How many people are like, uh, what the? F- uh, Look at all uh, that. I mean, fuck. it's just, it's disturbing. It's like Katamari, you know that shit? Yeah. <laughs> God. It's actually not the one, but you get the, you get the idea. I'm not going to look for it this whole time. <sighs> Man, it's scary. You gotta, you gotta, you just gotta realize how, how, fr- I mean, this is the earth, okay? This is shit that can happen on this planet. But there's, uh, I don't mean to give you guys an existential crisis, but there's shit out there called, uh, how, how's it called? Alpha or gamma, gamma bursts, gamma ray bursts. You look at a tsunami, hits Japan, it's devastating, scary. Gamma ray burst. It's when a star explodes and the direct zap laser from the star, it's, it's the, the chances are so slim of this happening. But it's basically when the laser zap from the explosion is basic, is guided right towards Earth. And it hits Earth dead on. We wouldn't see it coming. And we would all evaporate. Gamma ray burst. They theorize that it's actually happened before, once or twice. Because there's all these unexplained mass extinctions that have happened on Earth. They know there's been like six mass extinctions in the fossil record where all of a sudden everything dies. Or like 90% of the life on Earth just ceases. And sometimes they just can't explain it. Like the big dinosaur one, they're like, it was a meteor. Sometimes it was an ice age. 
Sometimes they just can't explain it at all, and suddenly everything on Earth fucking dies. It's like, what? So one of the theories is this gamma ray burst just hits the Earth. The side that it gets hit on completely evaporates. Instant death. Then the side that doesn't get hit, it basically obliterates the atmosphere. And, um, I mean, I think what happens is there's just no radiation protection from the sun. And it just gets super hot. And we all just fucking die. But I'm just saying, man, you gotta, you gotta just, you know, keep everything in perspective. I don't say, I don't think you should be scared by that. I think you should be liberated by it. When you look at a picture of the Milky Way galaxy, the Earth is on the outskirt of the Milky Way galaxy. You got a huge spiral on the very outside arm. There's Earth. It's like, who the fuck cares? About whatever shit's bothering you. It's not scary. And we're all going to die, by the way. It's not like you're a personal... What? 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 Oh, is that surprised you, Dan? Yeah, what are you talking about? Sorry that that's news to you, Dan. We'll have to have a, a conversation after the show. I've got, uh, got some bad shit to break to you. Okay. <laughs> but... It's like... This shit, you know... This shit hits Earth, we are all dead. You, you, you don't have anything to worry about personally. We're all fucked, right? So it's like, eh, who fucking cares? Do whatever you want. Just don't harm anyone else. And whatever you do, for God's sake, don't say the N-word. That's important. Because that's even worse than getting hit by a gamma ray burst. All right, I guess we got some calls. What do we got? We have got some calls by this cool-ass dude whose name is Cool Knowledge. Hey, Cool Knowledge, what's good? Hey, uh, just wanted to ask, uh, what are some of your uh, main inspirations when it comes to comedy? All right, cool. Thanks, Doug. Main inspirations. Definitely Tim Heidecker. It was the first time I ever thought even was like, oh my goodness, this is like some comedy that speaks to me, like really speaks to me. I remember I was sitting in my dorm room. I was like, saw my third year of college sitting in my dorm room by myself at a one bedroom place. It was like 3 a.m. Adult Swim comes on. It must have been like the first season of, of Awesome Show. And I was like, what the fuck is this weird shit? I had never seen, like, uh, Mr. Show or anything like that, which I guess is the predecessor to that show. And I was just like, man, this shit is wild. And it also was like, I had this, I don't know, I just love Tim Heidecker. I love the way he carries himself and does his comedy. And in a weird way, it made me feel like I, I could, I could, I could do that. Could try that. You know, our comedy styles are different, but I, but it gave me this thought of like, oh my, I always wanted to be a comedian, but I'm like, huh, what do I have to offer to the world? Still don't, I'm still not sure about what what that is, but um, all my beginning, all of our first videos was basically me just trying to be Tim Heidecker, and it was awful too, because that's kind of what it, learning a craft is all about. You emulate. Somebody you admire, someone you think's funny, and you just do it for long enough, and then all of a sudden, you, you, you be, it becomes your own voice, and that's when you actually probably start entertaining people for real. Definitely, Tim Heidecker. Um, I mean, in terms of inspiration, that's pretty much it. That was pretty much like the one dude who I was like, shit, maybe I can do this, you know, so... Pretty much that. Oh, we've got Haley from New Zealand. I remember her. Haley from New Zealand. This isn't your first time calling, is it? Haley? Oh, sorry. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Hi. No, it's not my first time calling. How are you? Yeah. Nice to hear from you again. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. 
Um, <laughs> so my question was, when you take that much deserved vacation one day, please take it. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> what is on your travel like to dos like must haves bucket lists? Mm, bucket list. All right, mm. cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bucket list. In my bucket is piss and jizz, and the words of Justin Roiland. That's what my bucket li- my bucket is full of. The list, however, I don't know. We want to go to Hawaii. We want to go to Italy. Uh, I'd like to go to Mars. I'd like to go to the center of the moon of Titan. But I guess just Hawaii and, and Rome. Get some pizza pies in Italy. Give it a forget about it. Is that what? Forget. Hey, forget. That's Italian, right? That's Italian. Hey, can I uh, forget about Can I get I want to forget about it. Hey, forget about it, huh? And they know exactly what you mean. Chicken Parmesan, light on the cheese. Hey, can I get it? Forget about it. Forget about it. I don't know. I'm a fucking idiot. <sighs> Guys, another show I love. American Vandal on Netflix. Loved it. Uh, let me be your guide to entertainment because I have such a hard time finding good shows to watch. Nathan, for you, must. And then another one that just absolutely consumed me. I was um, American Vandal. It's a parody, essentially, of all these true crime shows that are showing up. Specifically, I think it's a parody of, like, Serial, a podcast which a lot of people followed. I listened to it. I loved it. And it's the premise is um, somebody drew a penis on all the faculty cars at the school. And it's this huge whodunit. Who drew all the penises? It's such a great premise. And it, what's even greater is that what, what turns quickly starts as a parody and a satire turns into a legitimate intriguing show of who the fuck drew the penises. And actually one of the, the, the main characters, a YouTuber, um, Jimmy, Jimmy, the world according to Jimmy. Let me make sure I'm I'm saying his name right. Um, Life According to Jimmy. Man, he was great. He was so good. So cool to see, like, um, YouTubers out there actually making good shit. So tip of the beanie to him. Oh, we have the raffle winners. Hey, in other news, Justin Roiland, friend of the show. Motherfucking Justin Roiland. Oh, they took the fucking video down. What the hell? You serious? You guys heard his Terry Folds. He made this song for for one of the episodes of the season with his uh, with this band Chaos Chaos. Here I'm gonna play it for you. He was so fucking excited about this song. I remember I I went over to hang with him one day, at, like the day after he made it. He's like Ethan, Ethan, listen to this, listen to this, and everyone's like, dude, get it. Apparently he's, he's just played it like a trillion times for everybody who comes over. But because he's a very passionate man, very passionate about this song. And I get it because this song is awesome. Why is it so quiet, though? That's it. That's all I get, Jen. That's weird. Why the fuck is it so Let me find another one. So anyway, he he wrote, this, he wrote this song for one of the episodes. Grab my Terry Folds, touch my holdy flaps, take a big flap. So he wrote this take my for like uh, flaps. some really dramatic moment in, in one of the new episodes. This is great moment here. It's like real aggressive. Yeah, here. Squeeze them tight. You son of a bitch. Suck my holdy flappy folds. <laughs> Lick my flappy foldy holes. My terry flaps in your mouth. Suck my flaps, you piece of shit. Fuck. So anyway, this shit's a fucking, it's a total romp. And, and apparently this song was actually trending on Billboard Top Rock Songs at number 33. Above... 
Foo Fighters. Like straight up legitimate musicians. And you've got Justin Roiland and Chaos Chaos. That's the band he made it with. They're super talented. Check them out. This absolute goof was trending above it. I just love that so much. Um, So, it's available on iTunes. Go support Justin Roiland, friend of the show. Or just go give it a listen on YouTube. Tweet at him. Say, hey, loved your song, Terry Fultz. Tweet at Chaos Chaos. And say, hey, loved your song. Because it's great. And actually listen to it if you haven't. Because it's fucking hilarious. And, and, and here's the part that's the kicker. It's actually a great song. It sounds amazing. Uh, Chaos Chaos killed it on the background tracks. All right, let's, let's announce the winners um, of the raffle. So we we were we did it. We raised like two hundred and thirty four thousand dollars. Unreal. Now we we I'm gonna give a breakdown here. I think all this data is super interesting because we 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 made a script and had every dollar count as one raffle entry. We did it completely random, completely legitimately, and Dan and his infinite knowledge and wisdom recorded the whole damn thing to ensure. That if anyone ever doubts it, you can see that we did it legitimately. Because there, there's some people where it's like, oh, oh, uh, yeah, I bet he won, you know. So I just want everybody to know this shit is filmed. And it's legit. <laughs> now, Alex's classic red flannel was won by this dude, the Cottom, who donated five fucking dollars. It raised 8000 I actually felt bad because someone gave $2,000 for that one. I felt I really wanted that person because they clearly want it, but that's the beauty, right? But I guess they only had a 25% chance. Um, Rick and Morty, Rick Mobile, Diecast, raised 4000 was won by this guy. 10 bucks. It's so cool to see these, like, these nominal, on the smaller side, winning. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Um, let's see. $10,000. Wow, what the hell, Ela? Handmade Dunny dolls raised 10 grand, Ela. 10 bucks. Both winners. The Szechuan sauce killed it. $24,000, you madman, Justin. <laughs> that was number one. And actually, so here's one of the questionable ones. Is Matt from Loot Crate donated $1,300 and he got it. So congratulations. You know, it's crazy. You donate a thousand bucks, you still only have one in 24 chances. So it's not that good, but clearly much better. You've got uh, Justin Roiland drawings. Those were bought for 500. Let's see. Now, what was this? Morty shirt. Um, there was. Oh, Alex's journal did really good. The Blacklight Journal raised 14,000. Rick and Morty art book, 22,000. Holy shit. 150 bucks got that one. We already notified all the winners, by the way. We're shipping out everything today. So everyone who won, thank you for partic- participating. I love you. It's a beautiful thing. We're all, everything's packed up. We're sending it out. I'm really proud of all you guys in this community. You guys did some amazing work. $234,000. That is going to actually save lives. Thank you all, man. No, I mean, seriously, I'm just... I, 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 so, so cool to know that we can all come together and do this. Um, I'm trying to find some other noteworthy ones. It's really insane, too, because I remember you set the goal at 100000 and I, I was the doubter. I was the hater. I was like, all right, I mean, it's a noble goal, but we'll see if we make it. And this audience just blew that out of the water over double that. It's insane. Well, I, I had, I had, I had like faith in the Fooper Troopers that we would raise a hundred. I was like, well, we could get there because we had some amazing shit like Szechuan sauce. Come on. But yeah, that, that actually blew it out the water. That was crazy. Signed vape 17,000. No way. The guy who won that donated $1. How fucking cool is that? Lucky guy. I'm telling you, one dollar, man. That shit makes a huge difference. Dude won a seventeen thousand dollars signed vape. <clears throat> um, Teddy Fresh Hat, fourteen thousand. Nice. 
$5 donation. There was, this stuff's not completely filled out. Oh yeah, people, oh wow, there's a lot of calls we got to do. We're going to do those this week, guys, everyone who did that. Where's the Skippy one? Skippy's, okay, this I have to, I have to tip my beanie. Because last time we checked in, Skippy's belly button lint had only collected like 200 bucks. And I'm like, man, this is, this is some bullshit. Skippy's belly button lint collected $3,003. Skippy, you are a fucking god. That collection of lint, man, you raised $3,000 for charity with that thing. A huge tip of the beanie to Skippy for that. I mean, that is just a huge positive net goal. Anonymous won that one with 420 bucks. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you roll it into a blunt and I hope you smoke it for all of us. So, again, um, we're sending everything out. We're going to do the messages for everyone. Thank you, everyone, again. That was a really wonderful experience doing all that for you guys. Had a laugh. Had a riot. It's a goddamn. Goddamn. Um, yeah. So, you know, I guess that's about it, right? I got some, you know, it's about it. Let me see if there's a couple more callers I can take. There's one more caller. I'll take one more here. Uh, we got one call from your by Blorfus. Talk to me. Um, uh, how was your Jewish life growing up? Like, did you have a bar mitzvah? Did you go to services? Like that type of thing. Huh. Good, 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 good question there, Blorfus. Are you a Jewish guy? Uh, yeah. What, what was your Jewish life like? Uh, well, I went to Rosh Hashanah services yesterday. Oh, you went yesterday? Uh, See, I didn't even know it was Rosh Hashanah, so I guess my <laughs> Jew card is pretty much revoked at this point. <laughs> um, I don't go to services on Shabbat, though, but... So you're like jew light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, di- you're, you're diet Jew. <laughs> diet Jew. <laughs> Do you go to one of those temples where they, like, open up the back wall so they can fit all the diet shoes in for that one day of the year? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, you, you'll, you'll fit. When I was yeah. growing up, um, they're all diet shoes where I come from. And so, like, <laughs> on Friday, they've got this one room that everyone gathers in. But on the holidays, they actually, the back wall opens up. And they f- can fit like another 300 or 500 people because that's the only day of the year all the, all the, um, die Jews came. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, thanks for the question, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I come, my, my family, I think they're all atheists. Even my grandparents are, are atheists or, you know, agnostic as to not trigger anybody. Um, By the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with atheism. I think it's misunderstood. Atheism doesn't mean I know for a fact there's no God. That's not what it means. It means I have no reason to believe there's a God is what it means. I don't have any evidence. It's not like um, I, I know for sure there's no God. That's not what atheism is. But I, I would consider myself more agnostic, which is just like, I mean, it's very similar. I'm more like an agnostic atheist, which is like, um, I don't know, and I and I have no way to know, and so therefore I don't care, and I don't have an opinion, and I don't, and it doesn't have any impact on my life. I mean, God is really nothing more than a thought experiment, really. <clears throat> There's enough unknown things, but. You want to call that God, whatever. Anyway, they're all, my, my parents are big into like Jewish culture, I guess, because my grandparents grew up during a time when people were actually killing Jews, right? And so for them, it was important to, to embrace that, that identity and not, and, and not just let it, let it fade away into nothingness. So for them, it was important that we went to like Torah school. I did, I did have a bar mitzvah. This thing that they do is so fucking bizarre. You know, they send you to Torah school for like five years to learn to read Hebrew for your bar mitzvah. This is the strangest damn thing. They don't teach you what the words mean. They just teach you how to read it. 
is absolutely bananas. And so when I go to Israel, I don't fucking know any Hebrew. I know the alphabet and I know how to read it relatively okay, but I don't know what I'm reading. Is that strange? That's so bizarre. Christ. Um, so I'm a bar mitzvah. Yeah, I went to Torah school. But like, you know, it's very cultural with us. And, and, and as I think it is with a lot of American or European Jews, simply because that our, ans- our living ancestors lived in a time when people were actively trying to exterminate them. So it's like, let's, let's embrace this in spite of those fucking assholes. That's why I say I'm a Jew, right? You got to embrace it because fuck, fuck the, because fuck the losers who tried to essentially kill me and my family. They lost and I'm a Jew. I mean, I could stand before you and say I'm Jewish. God damn it. And you are a fucking Nazi and you suck and you lost. I think that's what the essence of it, you know? What's the point of fighting a world war? Millions of people dying if I can't stand here and be like, I'm a fucking Jew and fuck you. But I'm just a dude. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an agnostic atheist, but I'm also a Jew because fuck Nazis. I think my family would probably back me up on that. All right. Well, that was the um, Ethan <sighs> without his care episode. It was a little shaky start. I got a little. Good, f- dude. I did all right. Yeah, I was a little flustered in the beginning of like I have, I had like my notes. It's like talk about um, talk about when you have to talk to a machine when you call for your insurance. I'm like, man, I f- I f- it feels like a bad comedy routine. Ooh, you ever talk to your fucking? You ever talk to a machine? Yikes! How about that? How about that airplane food? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's the deal with Ovaltine? Am I right? It's not oval. It's round. It's a Jerry Seinfeld joke. Anyway, um, as always, thank you guys for watching, for supporting us, for spending your Friday afternoon with us. H3 videos are imminent. And I share the frustration with you. I want to be making H3 videos too. But the podcast is is like just, you know, it's the good thing about the podcast is that we can maintain it and we can still be here with you guys. Cause without that, I would just, I wouldn't be working on anything. Cause I can come in here and do the show while I still have, have all this other shit going on. So to everyone bought a shirt on h3h3shop.com, bless your heart. It's the best way to support us directly. The shirts are shipping out now and to everyone who's been waiting patiently. Thank you so much. In the future, we're not going to do pre-orders. We're just going to have them on stock. So you're going to get it immediately, not like this time. We are going to have some new items next week. Man, we've got this Vape Nation design that is going to freaking blow your socks off. It's so cool. And a beanie. Finally, we're making beanies. You know, I've been trying to make beanie merch for so long, but it always comes out so dumb. Like every time we try to make it, like, because we always had third parties who made our merch. And the quality wasn't right. It was like super tight and thin or it would just be like the H3 logo here. And it just, it looks so dumb. And I'm like, if we make a beanie, we got to do it right. You know, I don't want some broke ass dollar store beanies. This is the beanie nation. So, so that's it. Now, I guess let's go see how outraged everybody is by what, (laughs) by the first part. Let's see everyone angry now. It's a, why does everyone got to be so angry all the time? I mean, I was drunk and I was angry. Yeah, I was angry. You know, I was charged up. But people were so angry that I dared criticize. Let's not even talk about it. We that covered sh- it. We covered it. That shit's over. Just, just you know what? Myself included. Let's all chill out. Can you play us out with the gaze? But let's stand get, by. Gaze incoming. Stand by. You know, listen, I'm saying don't get so angry, myself included. I'm talking to myself on that one. Here she comes. We're all just need to gaze. Yeah, go ahead, play. It. At the the miracle of Brazzo. This is a man. 
a divine man. In the body, he has mortal flesh, but he's divine in, in essence. His gaze was brought down from Yahweh, from Jesus, from other gods. Dude, I've been watching these Brazzo videos for a long time, and until you pointed out that his eyes are like going in different directions today. And the twitching, I've too. I've never noticed it. The twitching can weird. Let's see. Do you know what? I'm, I feel like I'm watching a loop. You think he's not really there? <laughs> Can you imagine this lazy <laughs> fuck? They just record just him. CG Brazzo. He's like, listen, I'm Brazzo. I ain't got time to stand here for 30 minutes. I'll stand here for five minutes, five seconds, loop it. Um. Yeah, let's all just let's all just fucking have a soda pop and chill out, okay? I apologize. I'm sorry. To everyone I offended with the drunken rant. Brazzo. He forgives all the. He's not looking at me. Why is he looking in the corner? He's not even looking at the camera. What the fuck? You gotta pay for the um, Brazzo Plus edition where he actually looks at the camera. I think one eye is looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, listen. I love y'all and my Fooper Troopers. And we will see you on... Is Ela back? No, Ela's not back on Tuesday. So we've got one more episode without Ela. And then Friday, Bradbury's on deck. All right? I'm Ethan Bradbury. So uh, love y'all and see you next week.